Hello, welcome to Rising Technologies. I am Harish. You are watching part 4 of Core Java tutorial. In this session, we will discuss about data conversion in Java. Sometimes it is required to convert data from one type to another. For example, in a particular situation, we may want to treat an integer as a floating point value. These conversions actually do not change the actual data type of a variable or the value that is stored in it. They only convert a value as a part of computation. There are two types of conversions, widening conversion and narrowing conversion. Widening conversion tend to go from a smaller data type to a larger one, whereas narrowing conversion tend to go from a large data type to a small data type. There are actually two ways to perform these kind of conversions. One is implicit conversion and another is explicit conversion. Implicit conversions are done by compiler itself when there is no loss of information if the conversion is made. This type of conversion is also called as assignment conversion. It occurs when value of one type is assigned to a variable of another type. Implicit conversions are actually widening in nature. That means converting an integer value to a float is a widening, also a safe conversion, as it will not lose any kind of data, hence an implicit conversion can happen in this case. But if we try to convert a float to an integer, we know that we will lose the fractional part. Hence, in this case, explicit conversion is required. This kind of conversion will not perform by the compiler automatically. So, Let's have a look at implicit conversion. Suppose I have a variable of type integer and this variable contains some data. I have another variable and suppose if I try to assign this integer value to a variable of type flow, compiler will allow this assignment. Let's have a look at print current statement and let's try to print the value of this variable here. Let's compile this program program is successfully compiled. Now let's run this and look at this. Integer value is successfully converted into a float value by the compiler. So that is why we can say this is implicit conversion. The compiler has automatically performed this type of conversion for us. Okay. Now if we try to convert a floating point value to an integer value, let's have a practical look at this. Suppose I have this float variable which contains some data and I have an integer variable and I want to assign this float value to this integer variable and let's try to print this i variable and let's see what happens. Let's compile this, look at this error, incompatible types, possibly lossy conversion from float to int. So this kind of conversion will not be performed by the compiler itself. That's why we need to perform this conversion manually. That is why it is called as explicit conversion. Now to perform an explicit conversion, the way is casting. So casting is the way to perform an explicit conversion. And using casting, we can perform both widening as well as narrowing conversions. Okay, to cast. Put the target type in parenthesis in front of the value being converted. For example, if total and count are integers, but we want a floating point result while dividing them, so we can cast the total something like this. So I'm going to say result is equivalent to in bracket float and in front of this bracket and say I'm going to say total by count. So this is the expression and the outcome of this expression should be converted to float. So this is the syntax to cast a value into a desired type. Okay. So let's try to cast this float value into integer. So I'm going to say integer i is equal to integer of float. So the value from this float variable will be forcefully converted to integer type and then it will be assigned to this i variable. We know that there will be some kind of data loss as this float value contains 15.7 but an integer variable cannot hold the fractional part. So while converting this float data into integer data, we have con forcefully converted this float type to integer. So we may 
also lost the data okay so let's have a look at this let's run this program and look at this the float variable contains 15.7 but after explicit conversion i have converted this float value to an integer one and now look at the value in this integer i variable that is 15 that means surely i have lost this data 0.7 okay so this is the explicit conversion explicit conversions are useful when you want to convert the data type convert the result of a particular expression suppose let's have a look at this particular expression if i have a total variable and a count variable both variables are out of are of type integer so we know that this expression is also going to produce an integer result but actually i want that result in a floating form so we can convert the result of this particular expression using type casting something like this suppose i have this variable total and this variable contains 14 i have another variable let's say count and within this count variable i have this value 5 now i want a result within this float variable by dividing total by count okay and let's try to print this result let's compile this and let's run this I may expect the result will be 2.8 okay but look at the result result is 2.0 and why is that you can clearly see this expression contains two variables total and count and both are of integer type if any expression has both operand of integer the expression will also produce an integer result but i want to convert the outcome of this expression into float type so i can simply convert this result by type casting so i just need to say in bracket float so this expression will be converted to float the outcome of this expression will be converted to float and then it will be assigned to this result variable now if i compile this and run this now look at the answer i'm getting the real answer that is 2.8 so these are the situations where we need to convert the data convert the type of a particular expression or a variable to a desired type okay so using type conversion or type casting we can perform both widening as well as narrowing conversions another way is to uh, to convert data from string to another type that is parse methods these methods are useful if the number is in string format and you need to convert it to an integer type then you can make use of this parse int method of class integer note the difference it is not the premature data type int it is a class integer and this class is called as wrapper class we will be looking at wrapper class in a very great detail in later sessions today just note the difference that it is not a primitive data type it is a class and this int is the primitive data type of java so this integer class has a method parse int method this method takes a string as a parameter and returns it as an integer and this method may throw an expression an exception that is number format exception if the input string do not contain a valid number let's have a practical look at this parsing method suppose i have some data within this string variable and i want to assign it to an integer variable so i cannot say num is equal to str if i try to compile this look at their incompatible type string cannot be converted to integer so an implicit conversion is not possible from string to end so we need to explicitly convert this string into integer and for that i can make use of this parse method from integer class so i can say integer dot parse and this method takes a string as a parameter and it returns its equivalent integer and i'm going to assign that integer to this num variable let's try to print this num variable and let's see whether this num contains 123 program is successfully compiled and now if i run this look at this this print error statement has displayed 123 that means this string 123 is successfully converted to an integer via this parsing method. 
We have just discussed that the sparse input method may throw a number for an exception if the input string do not contain a valid number. Now, what I mean by that? Suppose this str string variable contains some value like this. Now we know that this is not a valid number. And now if I try to pass this value to an integer value, compiler will not be able to convert this data into integer and runtime it will throw an exception. Now if I compile this, the run is successfully compiled. But now if I run this, look at this. Exception in thread name, that is java.lang.number format exception for input string and the string that is stored within this variable. So this string is not possible to be converted into an integer type. That's why this number format exception is thrown by this particular method. Now there are various parse methods available within various wrapper classes. Actually there are 8 primitive data types in Java and there are 8 wrapper classes. That means one class for each primitive data type. So int is the primitive type whereas integer is the respective wrapper class. So all these wrapper classes have a respective parse method like within this byte wrapper class there is a method parse byte. This method takes a string as an input and it returns its equal byte value. Within the short class there is a method parse short. This method takes a string and it returns its equivalent short value. Similarly, integer.parse we have just seen this method in a practical example. This method takes a string as a parameter and returns its equivalent integer. Similarly, long.parseLong, float.parseFloat and double.parseDouble. All these methods take a string as a parameter and it returns its uh, respective limited value. Thanks for listening. For more details, visit our site at www.isingtechnologies.in. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel.